back to the Friday Night Sports Show. Lakeland has been our number one team for most of the season, and it's because the Chiefs have been impressive week in and week out. Yeah. Western Wayne has also shot in the Lackawanna League, though. Winners of six straight and on top of the District 2 Class 2A or 3A standings. Lakeland leads the way in Class AA, so both teams with big playoff aspirations. First quarter opening drive for the Chiefs that started at the 10 yard line. Domenico Spataro finds his man, Lakota Dupree, seven yards as he gets into the end zone. Oh, the Cats would come right back on the number one team, Frankie LaShawn. Dropping back and hits playmaker Sean Owens. 39 yards for the equalizer. We're tied seven apiece. Lakeland wouldn't hold back after the touchdown, though. Driving all the way down, Spataro taking it in himself. One yard, Chiefs take back the lead. Move to the fourth quarter. Chiefs lead by one. Fourth and six, Spataro on the keeper. Gets the first down and says, you know what? I'm going to keep going. Ice is the game. Touchdown 35 to 28. Lakeland avoids the upset from Western Wayne. 35 to 28. Big save for the Chiefs. Absolutely. Delaware Valley coming off a big win over Valley. View now facing Scranton late in the first quarter. Tyler Bird swings it to Ryder Machado, juking multiple defenders, and that's a clean break as he goes for the first score of the game. Just like that, 7 0 Warriors. The Knights respond on the ensuing kickoff. Matt Schilling, a big time return. Watch this as he fields it. Going to weave his way upfield. Schilling going down the right side, nearly houses this, eventually was tracked down. But that doesn't matter because eventually the Knights would cash in on the drive because off of this pass, it is who else but Schilling takes it in for a touchdown, game tied at seven. Late in the half, DelVal will strike back. Bird on the keeper, going up the sideline, and he's gone all the way for the touchdown. Delaware Valley takes the lead into the locker room, and they go on to win 28-14. Both Hansdale and Dunmore with a chance to solidify the season over 500. 21-12 Hansdale going into the second half. Third quarter, Max Michael takes the handoff, and look at this. He breaks a bunch of tackles going down the sidelines, almost crosses the pylon, but he's pushed out at the one or two. Now for the Hornets. Michael, he gets the handoff again, but Dunmore forms a wall. Stops him on fourth and goal for the turnover. The Hornets would later get a field goal to make it 24 to 12. Now ensuing Bucks possession. Danny Piga takes the pick, takes the handoff, and goes nowhere, but changes direction, and it works out. Breaks free and has himself a touchdown, 19-24. Dunmore actually makes the comeback and wins this one, 27 to 24. What a win for the Bucks. And Old Forge hosting Riverside in what's known as the Pizza Bowl. Blue Devils out to an early fourth down situation. James Sobel fakes the handoff, avoids a few tackles here, and then finds Nico Colino for a big first down. That play would give the Devils exactly what they needed to open up Josh Spindler for an 11 yard touchdown. And watch this, he carries three Vikings with him across the plane. That puts the Devils up 7 0. Later in the first, Spindler. Gets the handoff again and finds his way to the end zone again. A little more conventional this time. Old Forge up 14-0. In the dying seconds of the first half, the Vikings looking to put something up. Chase Tadonio throws it up, takes the hit, finds Reese Goggin to cut the lead in half. But Old Forge gets a late field goal and the win, 17-14. Coming up, we've got the rivalry matchup known as the Little Brown Jug Game. That's East Stroudsburg South and Stroudsburg out in the Poconos. We've also got more from District 2 as Dallas and Wilkes-Barre face off. Those highlights in a moment, but first, the sights and sounds of the Mid-Valley Marching Band.